Okay guys, I'm going to give you some more tips and tricks and stuff on how to make go about making uh, 2D top-down RPG style game like, you know, Zelda Link to the Past or, you know, RPG games that are indicative of what you would see on the Super Nintendo system. So we're going to look at uh, movement in uh, this video. Free range movement versus tile based movement and you know, why it's important to you know, choose the right one for your game. So here's the difference between the two. Uh, with free range, or let's start off with tile based movement. With tile based movement you're constrained to the tiles as you move. So I'm going to simulate this right now so uh, we, if you watched my last video you know that this bush is a tile, this bush is a tile, that grass is a tile. Everything is a tile on here, and when you move, you're confined to those tiles. And I'm simulating this like so. So, you'll notice that I'm trying to make it line up with the tiles. However, with free range movement, you don't line up with the tiles. You could be in the middle of a tile, on a corner of a tile, you know, anywhere you want. You got free range over the whole map. Okay? So that's the difference between the two movement. But there's pros and cons between the two movements. And we'll look at that a little bit. So with we'll start off with free range here. With free range, you can you know obviously travel everywhere you want, and to the player it feels a little bit nicer being able to uh, move around, as well as if you want to incorporate angles, so your character can walk on angles and stuff. It you know it feels a lot better. You know depending on what kind of a game you want, right? So some people, you know, want or need that free range for their game. Whereas uh, tile-based, you know, you're constrained to the tiles. So the pros of, you know, of uh, free range movement is that you don't really need a tile set. So if we went back to my last video and, you know, all that tile set, well, when you're dealing with free range, you don't really need a tile set because you're not confined to tiles. As long as you, you know, draw your map with some logic around it, uh, you know, you can get away without using a tile set, which is actually a lot easier to do because essentially all you have to do is just draw a map, right? Just design your level, just draw it out, your background, and you know, you're, you don't have to worry about uh, being confined to tiles, and it's a lot easier to do that without making a tile set, you know, a lot simpler, a lot easier. So that's an advantage. Uh, or a few advantages. However, there's disadvantages with it as well. So, um, if we use this bush for example, and let's say I went to push this bush, now what would end up happening is that my character, for example, if I you know just tapped on that bush like that, let's say, well, this bush might just move a little bit. Depending on how you you know programmed it, at the end of the day, it's clunky. So let's say I push this bush and I can find this bush now to the next tile because you, you want this bush to say push over one notch or let's say it's a rock and you wanted the rock to move over one square or one tile. What ends up happening is if you know you go up to it and you just move well you can have it confined to the next tile but your character just kind of nudged it and he didn't actually go into the next tile so it's not as seamless it's a little bit more clunky and you'll find that when it comes to doing a lot of puzzle stuff that when you have free range and stuff like this it's a lot clunky and it's a lot harder to make things look good and achieve the effects you want to do and you'll find you'll always be running into problems uh, another point like if I could just point out here if if this grass here, if you can imagine this grass, these bushes were lava, for example, and being able to free range around, uh, well, I could, you know, walk on the edge of this lava, for example, or, you know, on the edge of this lava, so, you know, you're not, you know, you're not confined to the tiles, it, and then it comes down to what kind of detection, collision detection you're using, is it pixel based or do you have to be you know, right in the center of that tile? It takes away a lot of the difficulty uh, behind it because let's say this was tile based and I was standing right here and this was lava. Well, if I press to the left, you know, I'd 
go into the lava, where if it's a free range, you could kind of, you know, creep on the edge of that lava. So, a lot of different uh, things in here that has, you know, its downfalls, especially, you know, when it comes down to puzzles. And I understand that, you know, Zelda and NES or Super Nintendo games, you know, used a tile-based movement. Okay, and at the other hand of the spectrum, we have tile-based movement, which, you know, pulls off everything a lot, uh, a lot better. So there isn't really as many uh, disadvantages. However, you know, you have to have a good uh, map design and a good tile set in order to pull it off. Otherwise, if, uh, for example, your tile set uh, isn't lining up with you know, your map, or you didn't use a, a good uh, tile or a good map generator, or however you know, you're doing it with your tiles, you could end up uh, being confined in between uh, tiles or, you know, on tiles on one and then not on confined on the other way and it could look a lot clunky. So, you know, you gotta really uh, follow it to the T. There is no room for error when you're dealing with, uh, you know, confining yourself to tiles. Which is a good thing, though, because, you know, once you do get it implemented, you're actually uh, better off, you know, being confined to tiles. And I believe, you know, that this is the reason why Super Nintendo went with the tiles, because they, they understood uh, the problems associated with uh, free-range movement versus, you know, tile-based movement. 